in our textbook, lesson 1.8 on space geometry. So the objective of this one is to visualize objects and relationships in two and three dimensions. A big part of that is going to be to practice our drawing skills, how to draw three-dimensional figures. Lastly, we're going to introduce some of the geometric solids that we will work with and discuss through our practicing um, dis our exercises, discuss and visualize cross-sections of the solids. First, we're going to take a look at basically drawing. So we already know that space is the set of all points. And then we talk about space being three-dimensional, shortcut it to 3D. So isometric drawing is the process of making a three-dimensional object that we see with our eyes two-dimensional on paper, yet be able to show the characteristics that this is three-dimensional. So one way of doing that is using isometric paper. So you can see here these crazy little dots or whatever. This is isometric paper. And you can Google that, just like you can Google coordinate paper. If you Google isometric paper, you'll get these dots. Notice that they're kind of at angles to each other. They're not exactly side by side. They're a little bit slanted. So when we are drawing something three-dimensional, we want to focus on a line. Let's say I'm looking at a bit building, and I want to see the cross sections that show me length and depth and whatnot. So we generally focus on the height. So let's say I'm going to draw a picture, and I want to go ahead and draw the height. Now again, my board is not the most accurate, so this is probably not going to be the best. If we were drawing this in person, it would be a little easier. But looking over here, notice that my object is one, two, three, four, five dots. So from end to beginning, it's five dots or four sections. That's how tall it is. And let's give it a width of maybe three dots. All right, and let's give it a length of um, I'm going to go with six dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Try and connect those points. Now that's going ahead and showing me what my length and my height and my width are. So I want to go ahead and connect the points that show the outside of that. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to draw this left dot here, and I'm going to go up the five dots necessary. So one, two, three, four, five. And then on the far right, I'm going to do the same thing, go up five dots. So one, two, three, four, five, and connect those. And then I'm going to connect the two segments linking the new heights to the original one. All right. And then go ahead and let's connect the back, or what's really the top of the rectangle. So I'm going to connect here and connect here. Now looking at it, yeah, we can tell that this is showing some three-dimensional characteristics, but let's go ahead and actually put some depth into this. When we show things that can't be seen, if I'm looking at a building, I can see the sides of the building, I can see the top of the building, but I really can't see like the back side of the building or the other sides. But to visualize that, I can go ahead and still mark the points, but I'm not going to use solid lines. I want to use dotted lines. So getting this point here, I'm going to count down the five units I needed. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to connect that with a dotted line. And then I want to connect two units down to show the width. And then I want to connect the corners, the six units necessary to get to the other side. So now when I'm looking at this, I can see that this is representing a three-dimensional object, whether it's a box or a building or whatever we want it to be. But this shows me the three dimensions. Again, it takes practice to have that. Uh, so looking at some isometric paper will help you with that. And again, having a pencil and an eraser is going to be really necessary. You want to try and draw as precisely as possible. And me being a person who doesn't draw so well, I understand the pain for some of you to feel that. Let's take a look at some specific solids. And then on, uh, in your textbook, on page 76 and 77, it shows you how to draw these objects using isometric paper and using isometric drawing skills. All right, so the six three-dimensional solids that we're looking at here are cylinders. All right, and we're going to, oops, let's fix that. So a cylinder is like a prism. Notice that between cylinders and prism, they're pretty much the same, but the base of the cylinder is a circle, 
And the base of a prism is a polygon. In this particular case, it's showing us a pentagon. So this is a pentagonal prism in the picture. Then we have spheres, all right? A sphere is a three-dimensional circle. Basically, everything is equidistant from the center. Half of a sphere is called a hemisphere. And then a cone and a pyramid. Cones and pyramids are very similar to uh, each other, the difference being that the base of a cone is a circle and the base of a pyramid is a polygon. In this case, it's a hexagon, so this is a hexagonal pyramid. What makes a cone different from a cylinder and a pyramid different from a prism is that they both come to a single point. They have just one base, not two that are parallel and congruent to each other. So go ahead and draw these pictures. Again, use the pages 76 and 77 to help you with drawing them accurately. And become familiar with these terms because we are going to reference these in our questions quite a bit. That's actually it for this lesson. It's a pretty short one. So when you're ready, move on to lesson 1.9.